welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In the 1800s, many believed in spiritualism. This is the belief that the spirits of the dead existed and were able to communicate with the living. Between 1840 and the 1920s, spiritualism was popular, and it is estimated that there were 8 million followers in Europe and the United States. The spiritualist movement began in the 1840s with the Fox sisters. In 1848, Kate and Margaret Fox of Hydesville, New York, reported that they had contacted the spirit of a murdered peddler. The spirit of the peddler communicated through a series of rapping noises. Others would hear the mysterious noises and believed the Fox sisters were actually communicating with the dead. The Fox sisters quickly became a public sensation as the first celebrity mediums. For 40 years, the Fox sisters convinced the public that they were actually communicating with spirits of the dead. Many believers of spiritualism were those grieving the death of a loved one. Many families during this time had seen their sons and husbands go off to the American Civil War and never return. These families wanted to believe they could communicate with their dead family members. The Fox sisters proved one could earn fame and money by communicating with the dead. In the 1870s, Mrs. Hannah Pickering of Rochester, New Hampshire, attempted to find fame and fortune as a medium. For a few years, she succeeded and gained a following in Massachusetts. Many from Massachusetts took the train to Rochester to see Hannah. Her show included more than just mysterious noises. Hannah had ghosts and spirits show themselves to her paying audiences. Hannah's career as a medium fell apart in 1878 in Lowell, Massachusetts. The following is from a Boston newspaper, Another Medium Exposed. At a seance on the night of June 23rd in Lowell, Massachusetts, the atrocious frauds perpetrated by Mrs. Hannah Pickering of Rochester, New Hampshire, in the name of materialization of spirits, were exposed. She has evaded the closest investigations at her home and one great celebrity. Representatives of newspapers have in vain sought for an explanation of the mystery. She would often bring out twenty to thirty forms in an evening, from infants to large men. On Saturday evening, a company of about thirty-five persons had assembled at one dollar apiece. The apartment and cabinet were examined, as usual, without disclosing anything wrong. A dim light was permitted, and several forms had appeared. Harry Woods, who has attended many of Mrs. Pickering's seances of late, had supplied himself with powerful opera glasses, by means of which he came to the conclusion that Mrs. Pickering herself personated the spirits. At about a quarter to eleven, what purported to be an Indian maiden danced out of the cabinet. Alfred Clark darted forward and tackled her, when Mrs. Pickering plainly appeared to be the simulator. Mr. Pickering, the medium's husband, tried to lessen his hold on the poor Indian. In the melee, both fell to the floor. The cabinet was overturned. Finally, Mrs. Pickering got back to the chair in the cabinet, where she had pretended to be all the time. She was wrapped in a blanket and carried to her room, and this morning she left the city. Three days later, she attempted to redeem herself in Lowell, Massachusetts. The newspaper headline was, Caught Again. A test seance was given this evening at the residence of Marcellus Fletcher by Mrs. Hannah Pickering of Rochester, New Hampshire. It was at her solicitation as she desired to redeem herself from the alleged discovery of trickery in this city last Saturday night. She was thoroughly examined before going into the cabinet and was then confined in there by mosquito netting nailed to the walls and floor. Several forms appeared, great satisfaction being given to those spectators who were spiritualists. Finally, she called for a light, when it was discovered that several tacks had been drawn from the netting, making a hole large enough to let her out. Pretending to be faint, she called her husband, fell on his bosom, and tucked a large amount of white fabric under his vest, which he tried to conceal. A policeman saw this and drew it forth, demanding what it meant. When Pickering acknowledged in the presence of all that it is a fraud, Mrs. Pickering said that in her opinion, such a thing as spirit communication with mortals is impossible. The age of spiritualism should have been called the age of deceit. In 1888, the Fox sisters admitted that it was all a hoax, and among the tricks they used was to tie a string to a hidden apple, then move the string up and down, causing the apple to bump on the floors, making rapping noises and thuds. They were also masters at popping their toes very loudly, which they were told their audience was the dead communicating with them. Other mediums were exposed as frauds as well. By the 1900s, the spiritualist movement was dying out. The movement had a short-lived revival in the 1920s due to the grieving families the First World War produced. 
Then these mediums were exposed as frauds. The age of spiritualism was over. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.